Hi, this is Shubham from Monist View and today in this podcast we will discuss and understand the Islamic finance and how it is different from conventional finance. Here we gonna discuss the basic principle, how the interest component described in Islamic finance, what are the different instruments available and how it is different and is it adoptable or not with a bottom line. So let's discuss with introduction. The guiding principle of Islamic finance is based on a Sharia as it's revealed in Quran and Sunnah of a Prophet Muhammad. All Islamic finance products and services are offered with the help of a Sharia laws. Also Sharia board oversee and review all these products. Let's discuss what is the principle of Islamic finance. So there are more majorly four principles. The first one is the principle of equity. Lending of a money on interest is forbidden and hence an excessive uncertainty is there for the time value of a money. Second principle is a principle of a participation. Investment return should be directly proportional to the risk taking and not connected with the mere passage of a time. So the person who participate with huge risk get a reward. Third principle is the principle of ownership. Islamic finance mandate asset ownership before dealing in any transaction. The fourth principle is prohibition of a trade that are haram that is prohibited. Trading activities with are inappropriate under the Islamic principle like trading in alcohol, pork etc are strict prohibited. Let's discuss the main component interest which is called as a riba. So riba is considered as a haram that is prohibited as it considered to be an act of exploitation and injustice to the economically weak by the strong and resourceful. The objection of an interest is that it is fixed and certain that is in insistence of a sum certain return for what unfair as per Islam. Islamic finance models are based on the risk and profit loss sharing contract as a to conventional banking process as interest is not allowed to depositors are rewarded by the share of profit from underlying business it can be said that the money has no intrinsic value that is time value the intrinsic value of assets is a net realizable value so to conclude for interest part in islamic finance riba that is interest is a haram that is prohibited as they share profit for the participants under islamic finance the relationship between depositor and banker can be viewed as an agent and principal, depositor and custodian, investor and entrepreneur and fellow joint partnership. Let's discuss what is Islamic finance different from conventional finance. The first difference is under Islamic finance interest is prohibited whereas under conventional finance interest is an integral part of a business and must be paid. The second difference is in Islamic finance is based on Sharia as revealed in a Quran and Sunnah that is Prophet's words in all Islamic finance product and service is offered fellow Sharia laws but in case of a conventional law there are such no framework and it is open natural and easily available across all parties because it's based on the time value the third difference is under Islamic finance financial transaction should be free from uncertainty and gambling but in conventional finance we find a route where a uncertainty can be form part of a transaction but which is based on the mutual agreement of all parties the fourth difference is under an Islamic finance transaction Actions are debarred from activities involving alcohol, pork and other socially disrespectful products which are provided as per Islamic laws but in conventional finance we can trade in any category based on the food items or speculations. Let's understand the various instruments which are available in Islamic finance. Here the words will be of Islamic nature but we will provide an instrument which has a similar feature. The first instrument is called Mudarba. Mudarba, which is a somewhere near to a venture capital where one party provide 100% capital and the other party provide a management skill and labor. Profit is shared among them on a pre-decided ratio. Loss is also shared by a financer. So here we can say it is a kind of a venture capital. The second instrument is Musharka. Musharka, that is a partnership, a partnership contract between two or more parties. All the parties provide the capital in the business in the agreed ratio these parties have a right to participate in a business loss is shared among the ratio of a capital and a profit is shared at a pre-agreed level the third instrument is a sukuk sukuk these are generally a bonds sukuk is a sharia complement bond which is different from a western bond instead of paying bondholder a rate of interest over a set period of time it's offered a rate of share of a profit bondholder also 
also have a right in the underlying asset of a company on realization of asset. Fourth instrument is Ijara, Ijara lease. In this the lesser purchase the property from the seller. Lesser and lessee execute the Ijara contract against the predefined periodic lease rent for a specific period of time. The lesser deliver the asset to the lessee. The responsibility of a maintenance of a asset remains with the lesser. Ijara contract is concluded between the lesser and lessee for a specific duration for a specific asset. The fifth instrument is Murbaha. Murbaha. Here the contract is similar to cost plus contract. The markup is either in terms of a percentage of a selling price or in lump sum. This transaction involves the financial explicitly disclosing the purchase price and the profit margin to the buyer. The buyer pays the financial in installment considering the two elements cost asset finance finance or profit on acquisition of asset. The sixth instrument is Stisna. Stisna. It's somewhere related to a manufacturing finance. The word Stisna means to manufacture or to construct something. It is a fund arrangement for a long term construction contract. The whole project is funded by the financer. It is an obligation to the part of a financer to deliver the project to the client upon the completion. The seventh instrument is Salam. Salam which is nothing but a forward contract. It is an arrangement where the parties is paid in advance for a transaction to be executed in future while the delivery to be made in deferred but the good or predetermined desired quality and quantity. The sale is generally made at discount price. Salam is prohibited in commodities such as gold, silver and other type of monetary assets. So let's discuss what is the bottom line over here. Islamic finance is different from conventional finance but Islamic finance has lot of practical application that is does not consider interest of a sum time value as well as prohibit trading in commodities such as gold, silver and other type of monetary assets of a speculative nature. So it cannot have a practical application in real world but it is exercised in some part of a middle east where the Islamic rules is there. So this is it guys thank you for joining with us for this podcast if you want to read the full article then the link of the article is in a description. Thank you Shubham from Monist News signing off.